for the next 10 days, six of those days are showing significant snow. So the goal is to stay inside, finish projects that I can inside. I was able to run down to the big box store, get the materials needed to finish the kitchen island, and then ultimately do the concrete countertops. But before I do anything, I have to build a structure that will support not only the cabinets, but the concrete countertops, and also these cast iron brackets that I, we ordered about two weeks ago. So step one is to build the wall. Build this wall. This wall right here. That's what I'm talking about. That's the only wall I'm talking about is right here. Build this wall. I have wanted to do concrete countertops for so long. And when I say so long, I'm talking like 15 years. We've been waiting for the right opportunity and the right house to do this in. We've had Formica countertops back in the old days. We've had granite in the last two houses. I probably could have found somebody willing to do granite up here at our place. As a matter of fact, my little brother did granite for many years. I'm sure he would have helped me, but granite didn't feel right going in this house. In my opinion, it was too easy. It's predictable. There would be nothing special about granite in this house, and it really wouldn't fit. We've considered doing something super rustic, like a live edge slab of dug fir. And while it would look good, the way we use and abuse things, I'm not sure how well it would have held up. Watch this. Come Over the years, I've researched the options when it comes to concrete counters. Back in Arizona, I've had a few friends do them. One of my friends took a handful of old coins and worked it into his concrete top before he sealed it. Another one of my friends put a horseshoe in his concrete countertop. Now, as Cedar and I consider different things, the truth is we wanted clean and simple. Square edges and nothing really that fancy, but perfect for the house.
Some time ago, I came across a website called ConcreteCountertopSolutions.com. On this website, I found literally everything I could possibly need to do the entire job for our kitchen. After reaching out to them and explaining how many square feet we were working with, we went to their gallery page, picked out the color of countertop that we wanted, picked out the style of edge that we wanted, and we were done. A short time later, all the forms reinforcing mesh and the additive for our concrete showed up and we were off to the races. Now I watched every video that I felt I needed to watch on their YouTube channel called Z Counterforms. It showed exactly step-by-step step what I needed to do to make sure our countertops turned out in a way that we would love them long-term. Now I have to say the biggest fear that I had during this entire process was the finish work. If there was one place where you don't want to mess up, this is it. But everything else is foolproof. So I installed everything as per their instructions and per the videos, and I couldn't wait to see how they would turn out. Now I decided it would be best to do this in two parts. The kitchen island first, then the kitchen sink and around the stove second. Okay, I think I'm ready to start pouring uh, concrete here for the countertops. Um, I have watched basically every video I need to watch on their YouTube channel, which is called Z Counterform. It's uh, directly connected to ConcreteCountertopSolutions.com. That's where I've got all my information. As I've had questions, I've emailed Dario over there and he's talked me through this. But I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I do not want this to go wrong. Cedar found a picture of the, um, the color of the concrete that she wanted, which I, I liked as well. I didn't really have a problem with it either way. It's a gray. It's nothing, nothing too uh, uh, fancy. But I, the main thing is as I pour each of these countertops, 
by following their system, the ratio should be perfect and I shouldn't have any discolorations between here and even the uh, laundry room. So here we go. Now because I chose to use plywood instead of hardy backer, I put down a clear coat over the top of the plywood to try and minimize how much water would be pulled out of the concrete during the drying process. Just as I started mixing the concrete up, my neighbor Terrell showed up and he was able to help me lay it down without too many problems. Now as we laid the concrete down on the island, I would reach into the concrete and lift the mesh, ensuring that the concrete got underneath the mesh as well as on top. The color additive that we got with the kit also had an acrylic fiber in it that also strengthens the concrete. But the fiberglass mesh and the plastic pillars that the mesh attached to made everything so simple. I've seen guys use everything from rebar to chicken wire to pig fence. And I've also seen stress cracks develop in the countertops around the rebar and the pig fence. It was really important to me that we use the right mesh and naturally they had this problem solved. I think I'm basically done with the finish on the uh, kitchen island. I may do one more, uh, hit it one more time. I'm waiting about 30 to 45 minutes, but it's getting pretty hard. It's setting up pretty good. There's not much. All that I'm basically doing at this point is knocking down the ridges, anything that's uh, this left from the trial marks. Um, so in between the uh, 30 to 45 minutes, I'm, I'm just sitting here eating some of cedars. Banana nut bread and drink a glass of milk and I'm exhausted, I'm ready for bed, but I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. No high spots, no low spots. Um, I think the color is gonna be good. It'll be a few days before we, we really get an idea what the color is, but, uh, but it could have turned out better. So tomorrow I'm gonna dive into doing uh, the uh, countertop side against the wall, which is gonna take a little bit more work. But now that I know what I'm getting into, it should not uh, hopefully be uh, too big of a challenge. So anyway. Now the way their plastic forms work is like nothing that I've ever seen. I've seen guys make their forms out of one by twos, one by fours, even angle iron and I've never seen it turn out this clean. The plastic forms are secured to the plywood using drywall screws. Then after 24 to 48 hours, they're snapped off like they were never there. The island could not have turned out better if I tried.
I was a little bit more nervous around the sink. While this same company does make a sink form, I opted to make one for myself out of foam. This worried me because this is the one place that if not done right, I wouldn't be happy. Rustic is one thing, poor installation is another. I took the time to make sure the form would fit properly. I then wrapped the edges of the form with packing tape and then I siliconed that form to the stainless sink and hopefully by taking time to do it right, it will turn out the way that we want it to. Once the sink form was in place, it was right back to installing the mesh and the pillars. And then again, I put a clear coat down. Now I guess this is as good a time as any to talk about our new dog. I failed to talk about him in our last video, and that caused a few of you to get concerned. Our new dog is a three-year-old Irish wolfhound named Finn. Finn weighs about 125 pounds. He's a little bit too skinny, if you ask me. He's a miniature horse, if you ask Cedar, but we all love him. Okay, now we're ready to do this side. I've got everything prepped, everything ready to do this side. Um, I worked really hard on that, that foam form. That's the only part of this that's got me a little bit nervous. I'm worried about how the edges are gonna turn out, but uh, we'll figure it out. Um, it seems like the concrete likes right around a little bit more than four, four and a half quarts, somewhere right in there. Uh, he recommended five quarts. Five quarts was a little bit soupy, so we, we found that during the island process, right around four, a little bit more than four quarts worked perfect. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and get started. He has a perfect disposition, yet he's protective of our family. He's alert and aware, and me and him hit it off perfectly. I got him from a young kid in a neighboring community that was going off to college and couldn't afford to keep him. He gets along great with Bandit, and like I said, he fits in perfectly with our family. After waiting a little bit more than 24 hours, I began snapping the forms off the kitchen sink side. When I pulled the form out of the kitchen sink, it came out perfectly as well.
Now I grabbed a piece of 200 grit sandpaper and a sanding block and I started knocking down some of the high edges and this was probably a mistake. I did this on the island a little bit too early and it caused one of the edges to be a little bit rougher than it should be. I probably should have waited more than 48 hours before hitting it with some sandpaper. But we absolutely love how it turned out. Our house is starting to feel like a home. Cedar has a place to work that she loves. We wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays.